Hello everyone and welcome back to the Super Heavy Applications program in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 where I put Super Heavy to nefarious uses other than launching Starship. And I've done a few videos in this. It's sort of a series, but it's all lumped into this uh, Realism Overhaul Sandbox playlist. So that's just how it is. But anyway, in a previous video in this quote-unquote series, uh, Philippe Robert suggested that I put the Orion spacecraft and Blue Origin's Blue Moon Mark II on to Super Heavy, plus the Hydrolock stages that I had made in that video. So in that video, I had come up with a lunar optimal configuration for Super Heavy, where it's lifting two Hydrolock stages, and then those Hydrolock stages were capable of sending 100 tons to the moon, which is a lot and so happens to be more than the combined mass of Orion plus the Mark II lander from the uh, Blue Moon Mark II lander from Blue Origin. So, and it basically comes out to be about 90 tons, these all combined, except for the launch escape system. So yeah, that fits just fine. And in fact, there's enough room there that I decided to swap out the original engines I had, which were my own speculative engines, and instead put the Blue Origin BE3 U's, BE3 U's, with 446 seconds of ISP, 710 kilonewtons of thrust, and we also have the Saturn instrument unit there for some reason. Uh, so yeah, we have a stage like that instead of using the uh, SE-2040Vs that I had made, and those have better ISP, so this is lunar suboptimal. It'd be more optimal with those engines because those have higher ISP, but it's a little bit more legit if we use the BE3Us. So that is our third stage, which will send the whole contraption to the moon. And then down here, and since the payload is only 90 tons, I'm hoping that'll be enough. However, I already tested trying to replace these RS-25s, with uh, the same engines, the BE3Us. I put 13 of those on here, and it doesn't work out great. Those do get slightly less efficiency than the SSMEs, especially since we're going with the long nozzle SSMEs, so 461 seconds of ISP. So those are just a lot better down there. And I don't think we'd be able to get enough delta V. We'll see if we can get enough delta V like this while still replacing the engines on the third stage. So let's find out. Otherwise, I'll have to go back to my speculative engines, which are sort of like big RL-10s. So let's see. Can we do a moon mission, uh, all-up moon mission, uh, Saturn V style, just uh, with Super Heavy? And Super Heavy will still reserve fuel for its return, but with the modern hardware, with the Orion and the Blue Moon Lander. That's the goal. Let's find out. Well, it looks like pad 39B is the nice stable pad today where nothing falls off, so we are launching from here. Uh, I am using the Sobel Orion space capsule and service module, incidentally. I really should try out Ar Artemis construction kit. I've been meaning to, but I have to cook up the RO configs for that and still haven't done that yet. So we'll be going with this. And so with that SAS on, throttle is up. I'm not using the KOS script this time, just so that I get st staging right, hopefully. And ignition. And launch. Up we go. The tower wasn't really big enough for it. We've got four Kerbals. Just the usual four, Jeb, Bill, Bob, and Val. It sort of looks like a more competent Ares one, in a way. Really, I should keep in mind that we don't want to go too shallow. Super Heavy would go steep anyway. We're past the speed of sound. I'm gonna go with uh, the typical timing for Super Heavy because the stuff that we've got on top is heavier than Starship is. There's more than 1,300 tons, just a little bit more. I expect to burn two minutes and 10 seconds with Super Heavy. Okay, we're at two minutes. 
Okay, so staging. We throttle up. Still the five RS twenty fives. Just out of curiosity, I'll see how much we have in here. We're at 1,700 meters per second. No, oh, that's horizontal. We've got 3,000. It'll definitely be enough. We're probably saving too much. This is about 1,000. It was less than 1,500 meters per second horizontal, so. Okay, letting go of the launch escape system. One problem with the Sobel Orion capsule in this case is there's some raster prop monitor misconfiguration. Don't know why raster prop monitor has to say it like that, but anyway, that'll be a little bit annoying, but not important at the moment. I mean, if you don't like the RS-25s on here, by all means develop another engine that gets about 2,000 kilonewtons of thrust and 461 seconds of ISP in this case because this must be the vacuum version. Anything like that will be fine. These are still the normal aluminum tanks, they aren't even the aluminum lithium tanks or anything like that. So just keep that in mind. Next up, no balloon tanks, no composite tanks, none of that. It's just the aluminum gridded tanks not refined and here we have the three BE3Us okay and shut down that's good enough 215 by 171 we'll say all right so transferring to the moon well first do we have enough um, it's a little bit underwhelming. Hmm, I shouldn't have saved so much in Super Heavy. Maybe a couple of seconds more would have done the trick. Well, anyway. Uh, we'll proceed and then do a correction of some kind. Well, since we're short, we're gonna take our time getting there. I mean, uh, it's not just not as fast as I could make it. Uh, 3,125... Or a whole hundred less. Not impressed. <laughs> I don't know, maybe there was some boil off or something. But I didn't time warp on the pad, so... But yeah, basically a couple more seconds with Super Heavy would do it. So how will our more proper moon mission do, exactly? It's already sort of awry because we are short that delta V. We're going to capture into a loose orbit around the moon. The Orion service module can't do any more with everything. I actually don't know what I can do pushing 60 tons of lander. And I think maybe we should capture the Orion service module and the lander around the moon separately <laughs> rather than trying to capture them both together. The lander might do a better job capturing Orion than Orion would do capturing the lander, but anyway. Okay, ignition. Then maybe you can use some of the RCS fuel here. As long as we don't completely deplete it, we still need to do transposition and docking. But maybe that can throw on some Delta V, I don't know how much. It's about a five minute burn left with this stage. Okay. Well, that's the end of the main engines. We've still got 55 left. I don't think the RCS is going to handle that. But we'll use a little bit more of it before doing transmission, transposition and docking. Okay, fine. 50 left. Kill rotation. All right. Separation. Okay. Control from here. Set that as target. We'll probably have to replot anyway. Okay. Well, that we will turn off for now. 
these can sort of tilt. That's what the deploy limit is for. Uh, I don't want to mess with that. And by tilt, I mean backwards and forwards rather than tilt towards the sun. Apparently they tilt forwards to avoid the thrust of the engines or something like that. But we don't have to worry about that. Seems a little bit off. Well, okay, well we connected. All right. Let me just get right at the decoupler if I can. Well, I can click it here. Um, or not. Where are you? All right, that decoupler, yes. Decoupler. All right, well, okay, kill rotation. So, what can we do and where can we do it? Well, this looks fine for now and we'll just use Orion to do it. Can you, like, stop rotating? This feels like Orion abuse, though. <laughs> I don't know how well it's going to be able to get back after this. Maybe I should just use the lander. Yeah, well... But Orion should be able to take care of this much at least. After this, we'll have them capture separately. But at this point, Orion should be in charge. Okay, well, ignition. I don't know how many we should have actually land. I'll just, uh... I'll just toss Jeb, Bill, and Bob, maybe. Val can be in orbit. I know uh, they're, they're probably not going to be going all the way through or anything. It'll be on a docking port here, but for obvious reasons, we're not going to dock them together over here. Uh, burns would be horrendous, I mean, or impossible. So for this kind of stuff, we're going to dock them like this, and they'll wait until some other opportunity to transfer over. They'll have to redock for that, potentially. Okay, we've got encounter. Should probably go the other way. Should probably be polar or whatever, but we'll just keep it easy for now. NASA would get better results, I'm sure, from everything. Okay, a little bit close there. Alright, so we'll be like that. And then we'll capture loosely, but... Yeah, separately, because otherwise Orion probably doesn't have enough to come back. And we want it to be able to come back, so yeah. Uh, I think I'll do the rest of this, because we had the explanation part as well. I'll do the rest of this in the next video. So it'll be a two-parter. Will our Intrepid crew make it over there on the single launch version of a moon mission with modern hardware? Modern hardware all the way, really. Uh, or will it be too tight? Uh, the Delta V, you know, it's complicated. We've got the uh, stuff in Orion, we've got the lander. The lander has lots of fuel. Hopefully it doesn't have too much boil off. Uh, well, we've got MLI layers, it seems, but there is boil off loss. And yeah, we are not refueling anything. This is important. So we'll catch up with them in the next video. For now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.